Welcome to our Endgame DVD, Volume 2. We are going to learn a lot more about endgames now. If you feel that these examples are too difficult for you to follow, I recommend to watch the Endgame DVD, Volume 1, again. Now, let's start and learn more. First, we will start with pawn endgames, as they are the basis of all other endgames. In our very first position, white has an extra pawn, but they have to be extremely careful right on the first move. There is only one correct move here. If white makes the mistake by playing the most natural move, king e2, black will save the game, because when the king will get in front of the pawn, black will be able to get the opposition. After king d7, king e3, and now, very importantly, distant opposition with king e7. When we are talking about opposition, the distance between the two kings is always an odd number of squares, either 1, 3, or 5 even. Now, after king e4, black will play king e6. And after king f4, king f6, and the game is a draw, just like we learned on our Endgame DVD Volume 1. Going back to the starting position, here in this position, white's only way to win is coming on the diagonal to f2, after king d7, king g3, and after king e6, gaining the diagonal opposition by playing king g4. Now, after king f6 and king f4, it is black's turn, and black must give up the opposition by moving the king to one side or the other, when the white king will go to the other side and gain a winning endgame. In this position that we see on the board right now, there are equal pawns, one each. However, white's pawn on d5 will be lost. After the black king comes to c5 attacking it, white will not be able to hang on to it. Therefore, white needs to look for a way to give it up in a way where white will still save the game. For example, if white would play king c3, black would simply answer with the natural king c5, followed by capturing the pawn, and after king c3, king c5, king d3, king b4, black would win easily. White in this position needs to find the only move, otherwise white is lost. The correct move is to give up the d-pawn right away forcing the c-pawn to capture, and now white can gain the opposition by playing king b3. So after king c5, the answer can be king c3, king d5, king d3, and the game is a draw. It is important to note that this opposition theory only works if the king is immediately in front of the pawn. For example, if in this position it is black to move, black has a reserve move and could play d6, giving the right to move to white, and therefore white would have to give up the opposition and move the king when black would win the game. In this position it is white to move, but they have to be accurate in order to find the win. The most natural idea would be to run with the king to the queen's side to try to capture the pawn on b4. However, after the natural king g4, black could save the game with the same exact system that we just learned in the previous position, by playing b3, giving the pawn up, and when the white pawn captures, then king g6 and black gained the opposition and is saving the game after king f4, king f6, king e4, king e6, king 
king d4, king d6, king c4, king c6, king b4, king b6, and saving the game. Also, after king g4, b3, pawn takes, king g6, the black king would reach the promotion square if white would start pushing the pawn quickly. The black king comes right in time. Understanding this, we'll realize that the correct move here is for white to gain the opposition right away by playing king h4. That is the only correct move in this position. Now, if black would do the same thing, try to give the pawn up by playing b3, pawn would capture, and after king g6, king g4, king f6, king f4, the both king marching to the queen side, and then king c5 wins for white. Also, in the starting position, after king h4, the correct move, if black does not give the pawn up right away, white is winning after king g6, and the king marching to the queen side, because white captures the pawn, and then wins again. In this position, again, each side has one pawn. Now, it will be a race. White could try to get the black pawn, but black will try to do the same, get the white pawn. Let's see who would win first. King g5, king c2, king f6, king c3, king e6, king c4, king d6, king b5, king c7, and now, Black not only protects his own pawn on b7, but puts white in Zugzwang, meaning white needs to move and therewith give up on the b6 pawn and get a lost endgame. In this starting position, white needs to think how to save the game. White cannot play for win, because then they'll even lose. What we need to understand in this position is that the minute when the black king will capture this pawn, since we realize there is no way to protect it and hold on to it, our king needs to be and wants to be moving to b4 to gain the opposition. The only correct answer is a little bit surprising but the only correct way to play king g3, king c2, king f2, king d3. As you can see, black's king is trying to shoulder. What we mean by shouldering in a pawn endgame is that the black king is trying to get close to white's pawn on b6 and at the same time not letting the white king come across. So now the king moves to e1. Looks strange, but that's the only correct way, because our goal is to reach the b4 square. After king c4, king d2, king b5, king c3, and now we are ready. Whenever black decides to capture the pawn, we want to move king b4 to gain the opposition. If in this position, for example, black does not go to d3 and moves to d2, not allowing our king to go to e1, then white would just play king f1 and wait until black decides to go in the direction of the white pawn up towards b6. And then, the same way, king e1 would save the game. Here white needs to realize the danger. They have to look for a way to save the game. After just playing king e2, hanging on to the pawn, black would be winning, because the pawn would advance too far, playing d4, and after, let's say, king e1, black would play d3, putting white in Zugzwang, 
As we know, Zugzwang means a position where one side must worsen their position because it's their move. And in chess, it's not only your right to move, but your obligation at the same time. After king e2, d4, d3 does not help the cause either, because after king c3, again, white must give up the pawn. And even though white would gain the opposition here, black's king is already on the third rank. And in this case, this doesn't help, because after king e3, king e1, d3, king d1, d2, White must get out from the promotion square, followed by king e2, winning for black easily. So if you look at the starting position again, you realize that the correct move here is playing d4 and giving the pawn up there. And after king d3, king d1, being ready, the minute the black king captures the pawn, you want to be able to move to d2 and gain the opposition and get a drawn endgame. This endgame is a very famous position composed by Reiti. This is a race where white has a passed pawn and so does black. However, white's pawn is right next to black's king. So if white would push the pawn here ahead to c7, the black king could catch it very simply. While the white king is far behind black's pawn and seems impossible to catch, the king will always be two moves behind. Yet, there is a special way here for white to save the game. Combining trying to catch black's pawn and trying to help the white pawn to promote. Let's see how that works. White plays king g7. Black is running with the pawn. White plays king f6. Now, if black pushes the pawn forward to h3, White would continue with king e6, giving up on trying to catch the pawn and going to help the white pawn to promote. After h2, c7, and now either the black pawn promotes right away, when the white pawn can promote as well, or after king b7, king d7, black promotes, and white promotes, and the game is a draw. Going back to the beginning position, after king g7, h4, king f6, black can try also to play king b6, trying to capture the pawn first and promote the pawn later. If white is trying to catch the pawn with king g5, the king is still behind and will not reach the promotion square on time. Here, the beautiful move is going to e5. And now, white is combining, trying to catch the pawn, as well as trying to help his own. Therefore, if black captures the pawn, king f4 saves the game. Or if black pushes the pawn, then after king d6, h2, c7, again, the two pawns will promote at the same time and the game ends in a draw. This was a perfect example to see how in chess geometry works differently than in real life. Here, walking straight on the g-file is not any quicker than walking along the diagonals. We get there in the same amount of moves.
Now, let's see some examples when one side has an extra pawn. In pawn and games, that's usually a win, with more than one pawn on the board. However, there are plenty of exceptions to it. Let's learn about them. In the position we see on the board, white has a very simple winning plan. Going after black's only pawn to the queen side, capturing it, and then promoting the queen side b pawn. The following would be the moves. King f5, king h6, king e5. Black is busy getting rid of the king side pawn first before the black king could run to the other side. We capture the pawn and then king c6, king d8. And now we could push the pawn as well, but the simplest win is just put the king on b7, making sure the black king will not get in front of our pawn and then pushing the pawn up and getting out of the way with the king and promoting the pawn. Now we made a small change in the position. We pushed the two pawns towards the edge of the board. Now white has a rook pawn here and that makes it impossible to win this position. Let's see how it would work. For example, if white is running king f5, king h6, king e5, king captures pawn, and now the black king can start running towards the queen side, white captures the pawn, king d7, king b6, and black reaches the crucial c8 square. Just as we learned on our DVD Endgame Volume 1, this is a drone position because either the black king will get to the corner and white cannot make progress, only makes stalemate when the pawn advances all the way to the seventh rank, or if white decides not to let the black king into the corner, then the king will be in front of the pawn and therefore the pawn cannot advance. So either the king will stay in front of the pawn or when later the king gets out, clearing the way of the pawn, that would allow the black king to get to b8 and then to the corner and reach a drone position. In the meantime, black would be going back and forth between c7 and c8 until the king is ready to march to the corner. Therefore, this position is a draw. In this position, we moved white spawn from h5 to f4. In these type of positions, you always need to calculate. And the key question is, if the black king is able to reach the c8 square in time. When I'm talking about this position. If black only reaches on d7, the white king would be able to play king b7 and win because nobody can stop the a pawn. In our starting position here, white is winning simply by going with the king after the pawn on a5 and after king f5, king c5. King takes pawn, king b5, no matter how quickly the black king is trying to run, it does not reach the crucial c8 square in time. White is winning. Let's see now another very important type of position. In this position, if it is black to move, black is in Zugzwang. Black must go down with his king to the 8th rank, allowing the white king to come in to g6 and then capture the pawn on h6 and then gaining a second pawn and win easily the game. But let's see what happens if it is white's turn in this position and not blacks. Well, white's goal is simple, to reach this very same position with black to move. And the way to accomplish this is by triangling with the king. Let's see how to do this. King e5, king f8. Now, if white 
wants to simply advance with the pawn, king e6, king e8, f7, king f8, the game is a draw because the only way to hang on to the pawn is coming to f6 and that would be stalemate. That is why we need triangling here. By playing king e4, remember the black king can never move to f7 because king f5 and then we accomplished our goal. Black to move and then the king needs to move and our king gets to g6. After king e4, black better moves on the 8th rank by playing king e8. Now king f4, still the black king better does not move to f7 because then we accomplished our goal. The king moves again to f8 and now king e5. King e8 and now when the king is on e8, now we play king e6, king f8, f7, king g7, king e7 and the pawn will promote. By the way, remember another trick here, black can still pull by playing king h7. And now don't quickly promote your pawn into a queen because that would be stalemate. More than one people fell for this trap, don't be one of them. Here of course white can win very easily either by promoting the pawn to a rook, which wins, but even quicker win would be playing first king f6 as the black king still has an empty square to go to, to h8 and now the pawn can safely promote to a queen with a check and after king h7 we can checkmate right away. So the bottom line in this position is we need to triangle and reach either this position with black to move or to reach this position with black to move. And as you saw, it wasn't that difficult. This position has been reached between two famous grandmasters, Timman and Yusupov. Black is a pawn ahead, so white kind of has to worry. But thanks to the distant opposition, white can save the game here. Let me show you how the game concluded. The only correct move here for white is king g2. Now, after king g5, which did not happen in the game, white would play king g3. After king f6, king f2, keeping the distant opposition. On the other hand, it would be a mistake to play king f4, when after king e6, king g3, king e5, king f2, king d5, king e2, king c4, king d2, king b3, and so on, black is winning. Black in the game played king g7 after our first move. Now, king g1, keeping again the distant opposition. In this position, king g3 also did the job, saving the game. King g1, king f7, king f1, king e6, king e2. Again, you're seeing in a distant opposition there are three squares in between the two kings. Black played now, king d5, king d2, king d6, king d1, king c5, and king c1. Again, gaining the distant opposition, king b5, king b1, king a5, and now white cannot play king a1 because it would be too far from the e-file and black would break through and win. However, king c1 does the job. And after, for example, king a4, king c2, diagonal opposition, then king b4, king b2, king c4, king c2, and black cannot make progress. Therefore, in this position, 
the grandmasters agreed to a draw. This is one of the more difficult kind of pawn endgames, especially with only three pawns on the board. 